Hi, Chris Good here. This is a talk on factorial analysis of variance. So uh, we can actually consider several different types of factorial analysis of variance. Uh, the one we're going to use in an example uh, today is an independent groups factorial ANOVA, but uh, please understand that you can uh, have repeated measures or related measures ANOVAs where you have the same uh, entities that are um, uh, sort of being exposed to combinations of two different independent variables, um, in which case you'd have a fully repeated measure as ANOVA, but you could also have a blend of this where one of your factors, one of the independent variables that's being manipulated in ANOVA is independently manipulated, and another one might be applied in a repeated measures way. We call that a mixed design, and you would use a mixed analysis of variance you know, to analyze data resulting. Okay. Um, you probably remember from undergrad, uh, if you studied factorial and over there, that when you talk about factors, you're actually referring to independent variables. So different independent variables in a factorial design we call different factors. You, uh, you could call them factors in um, a one-way uh, design as well, that the independent variable there could also be referred to as a factor. It's important to understand that if you have a factor, a single factor, it will have multiple levels. So if you have an independent variable, uh, it varies in at least two different ways. You have at least two different groups for you to, to have an independent factor or variable. Uh, and in factorial designs, we refer to the design, we describe the design by the number of levels of each factor in this manner. You'd refer to a two by three design where you have two factors, two independent variables, one with two levels and one with three levels. Well, you could have a three by four design, one, one independent variable with three different groups, and at the same time you're manipulating a second independent variable with four different groups. And we'll talk about an example, a simple example in just a moment. You could have three different factors. You could have a two by two by two design. Um, that's uh, indicated thusly, well, two times two times two. We, we uh, refer to that as a two by two by two design. There, there's three independent variables. Each one has two different levels. So uh, that's how we describe designs in analysis of variance. Does it matter which one you do first? Is it, is it always the smaller number first? No, but it doesn't matter which way. You could say it's a three by two design or a four by three design, as long as you're consistent in your nomenclature. So if you have uh, two different levels of um, uh, you know, time of day and three different levels of uh, drug dose, then you wanna say it's a two by three design wherein you manipulated time of day and drug dose, and you maintain that parallel structure, right? So it's the two is the time of day, and the three is the drug dose, and you talk about it in the same order so as not to confuse the reader or the listener, etc. Okay, let's go into the example that Field uses in the textbook, yet another classic Andy Field example. This one involves alcohol. Um, note that one of the independent variables, one of the factors here has to do with the dose of alcohol that you get. So in the simplest case we're comparing uh, zero pints versus four pints. I just want to bring your attention to the fact that when you order a pint in the US, um, it may be the case you're getting shorted on the what you're actually getting here because um, you know you, you often get these little tiny pints that are for, actually 14 ounce pints. In the United States a pint is uh, it's supposed to be 16 ounces. You actually may be getting less than that, but this is um, a 16 ounce pint in the US. Fields from the UK though, they do pints differently there. When he says a pint, he's referring to the British Imperial pint, which is actually 19.2 ounces. So I just want you to keep this in mind as we're reviewing this data set that uh, we're looking at data that come from folks with after they've had four pints. Uh, and that's like having two, 40 ounce um, containers of, well, okay, I think you get my point. All right, let's talk about the dependent variable here. So what's being measured? Uh, that's the, always the most important question, what's being measured? Here in another classic Andy Field example, the dependent variable is an attractiveness rating. But let's be clear about who's being rated on their attractiveness. It's the people who the, it's not the attractiveness of the participants, it's the attractiveness that's rated by someone else 
of the people who the participants were chatting up after they drank either no alcohol or four pints of alcohol. So that that's the dependent variable's attractiveness rating, but it's is people who are being rated on their attractiveness, and it's not the participants, it's the people the participants were talking to. It's, and it's not the participants rating their attractiveness, it's independent judges who are rating how attractive was the person that women and men were chatting with after drinking none or four pints of, um, let's just say it's, it's beer. Okay. So there's one dependent variable here. There's two independent variables. Even though we're not manipulating whether somebody's male or female, we're still gonna use the same statistics as though it were uh, completely independent of, of any other factor. So we have one independent variable, one factor here with two levels, male and female. We have a second factor here that is also an independent groups uh, independent variable, it's a second factor, which is how much alcohol were they drinking? None or four. So think for just a moment about uh, how you would describe this factorial design. I'll wait. Well, if you are thinking that this would be a two by two design and you'd write this two times two, uh, you'd be absolutely right because you have two levels of one factor, two levels of another factor. It's a two by two design. Okay, so here's the raw data. We have totals, means, and variances for all four of the resulting groups. And now you can understand why we write that says two times two because you get four total independent groups out of a two by two design. And like every other, uh, statistical analysis in this course, we're going to consider what this would look like as a linear model. So uh, you guys are really good at filling out dummy code tables. Here's new dummy codes for the two-way ANOVA. The dummy codes for uh, the first um, factor that we're interested in are pretty simple. Um, you get a one if you're one gender and you get a zero if you're not that gender. So in a, in a uh, two level um, uh, factor here, it's pretty easy. You get one, one for the females in the study, women in the study get a one, uh, men in the study get a zero for the gender dummy code. Similarly, for the alcohol dummy code, uh, it works the same way. If you had the four pints, then you get a one, right? So men who had four pints get a one for the alcohol dummy code. Women who had four pints get a one for the alcohol dummy code. Um, men who, both men and women who had no alcohol get a zero for the alcohol dummy code. Okay. In this two by two design though, there's an interaction. Uh, we're gonna talk about what an interaction really means uh, later on, but super briefly, it's the, an interaction occurs when um, the two variables interact, and what that means is that it, it may be the case that um, the effects of alcohol are different for men than they are for women. Right? Um, you could also look at it the other way around that um, there's a there may be a gender difference that is not the same in the presence of alcohol as as it is when when there's no alcohol around. Uh, so this interaction effect, we're going to code for that by multiplying the dummy codes at, on, for, each individual, for each individual group here, we're gonna multiply the dummy codes to produce the interaction dummy code, okay? There's another reason why we uh, describe this as a two by two or two times two design. That's the way we write it out as two times two. So this times this equals this. M a male dummy code for gender is zero. Male dummy code for, sorry, that for the males who had no alcohol, their gender dummy code is zero because they're male. Their alcohol dummy code is zero because they didn't get any alcohol. When you multiply these two dummy codes by each other, you get zero for the interaction dummy code for this group. Let's go on to the next group. So these are men who had four pints. The men who had um, four pints still get zero for their gender dummy code because they're men. Uh, they get one for their alcohol dummy code because they had four pints, 
but when you multiply these you get zero because zero times one is zero. Okay, let's do it for this third group. Women, no alcohol. One for the gender code because they're women. Zero for the alcohol code because they didn't have any alcohol. And one times zero is zero for the interaction dummy code. Okay, last group. Women who had four pints, they have an interaction dummy code of one because you multiply their gender dummy code, which is one because they're women, times their alcohol dummy code, which is one because they had four pints. So one times one is one, and you end up with this last group having the dummy code of one for the interaction and the all the other three groups that are represented in this two by two design four groups, uh, the, the remaining three get a zero for the interaction term. Okay. What does this look like when you put these dummy codes into a final linear model that Field and I are so fond of? Um, well, what you end up is something like this. You, if it were, it's not simply that you put your two dummy codes in, the gender and the alcohol dummy code, and then you add the error and then you're done. Because there's this third interaction term that is required to be part of the design because these two independent variables may interact with each other. And again, we'll come back to talk about what that actually means in, in just a second. Um, here's the resulting model that's correct. That the dependent variable, and this is the attractiveness as rated by independent observers of the people that were chatted up by the participants at the end of the evening, men and women participants after drinking zero or four pints, is predicted by this intercept B sub zero, right? And you get this intercept when all uh, three of these things are zero. Zero for the gender code, zero for the alcohol code, zero for the interaction code. Um, there's only one group out of the four that has zero for B1, the, for the, uh, uh, codes that act on B1, B2, and B3. All right, and if we go back to the table, you will find that that's men who had no alcohol. So this B sub zero should be equal to the best predictor for uh, men, because they have a gender code of zero, who had nothing to drink, right, and they have an alcohol code of zero, with no interaction term. And there's only one group there, and that's men who, who drank no alcohol, right? So that B sub zero uh, is equal to the mean of the men who drank no alcohol. All right. Uh, what is B sub one then? Well, if you follow Fields chapter, you can do the math and discover that uh, B sub one will be equal to the difference between women and men in the no alcohol condition alone. Similarly, B sub 2 is going to be the different, the value of B sub 2 is equal to the difference between the men, uh, the, uh, the mean of the uh, men who had four pints and the men who had none. So this represents the alcohol effect for men. This represents the gender effect for no alcohol. And these are kind of baselines for those effects. So these are, this is the gender effect at the baseline level of alcohol. B2 is the um, alcohol effect at the baseline uh, level of gender, which is men because they have the zero for the uh, uh, gender box. Okay, this third term, this interaction term, when you do the math, it ends up representing the difference in the effect of gender between the alcohol levels. The, this is a little little harder to explain, um, but there's a graph on the next slide that, that I think sums it up pretty well. So it's a, B3 is actually a difference between differences, or a difference in effects at the different levels of the, the other factor. Um, mathematically it works out to be the difference between men and women who had no alcohol minus the difference between men and women who had some alcohol. So really it's looking at this difference here. This is the, the gender effect in the no alcohol group. And this over here, men four minus women four, this is the gender effect in the alcohol group. So the difference between those two quantities 
is an indication of the extent to which the gender effect depended on alcohol, right? It's how much did the difference between men and women depend on whether they get, got alcohol or not. So it's the difference between differences. Let's look at this in the graphical format over here. All right, so green lines in the slide are uh, connect the women's means, red lines connect the men's means for no alcohol on the left side of the top graphs and four pints on the right side of the top graphs. And the distance between the data points, right, if you look at the top left, attractiveness rating, this, these are just two different ways that, that the data could come out. The top left represents an interaction, a significant interaction, where the difference between men and women goes in one direction when they have no alcohol, and it goes in the other direction and to a much greater extent when they do have alcohol. And what we've plotted here are the differences on the bottom left graph. So the difference is positive and mild when there's no alcohol involved, and it's negative and extreme when there's four pints of alcohol. So if we go back here to B3, B3 is the difference in the effect of gender between the two alcohol levels. All right? This value here, the difference between men and women, that's a gender effect. And it's of a size and a magnitude that's very different when there's no alcohol than when there's four pints of alcohol. And that's an indicator of an interaction. What does it look like if there's no significant interaction? Right? If this B3 value is not significantly different from zero, then that means you have a situation like we see on the right pair of these two graphs. All right? For no alcohol, the uh, rating of attractiveness is actually uh, higher for both men and women. Oops, sorry. For both men and women than uh, when they had four pints of alcohol. So it looks like men and women are chatting up uglier people after four pints than uh, if they didn't have any alcohol at all. There's a difference between men and women, though, where women are. Um, uh, it looks like women are a little less choosy than men um, when there's no alcohol involved, but the difference is the same size after four pints, even though relatively both of them are rating, are, are chatting up less attractive people. The difference between men and women is the same when they have no alcohol as it is when they have four pints. It's a little bit less, but it's probably not significantly different. So this is what it would look like if there's no interaction. And the, the B3 term would be the difference between these two pints. It's the difference in the difference, the difference between the differences. OK. Let's look at another way of thinking about how factorial analysis of variance is splitting up this total variability. So in one way ANOVA, you're taking uh, variance that's explained by the experiment manipulation and chance and individual differences. And you're comparing this to unexplained variance. Factorial NOVA allows you to partition out the different experimental manipulations that you're making, right? Variance explained by one factor, variance explained by the other factor. But if you do this, you're always going to have some potential variance that ex is explained by the interaction of these two factors with each other. So let's briefly consider um, a slightly more complicated design where we have a third level of um, this, that alcohol factor. So how would you describe this type of factorial design? And I'll wait while you think about it. So if you're thinking that this is a three by two design, uh, then you're right. You might also think about the other way around. This is a two by three design. So with two levels of gender and three levels of alcohol because we have none, two, and four pints, right? And men and women. So you could describe this either way, three by two, two by three, as long as you're consistent in your nomenclature. So it's a two by three design and we're looking at the effects of gender and alcohol dose or three by two design looking at the effects of alcohol dose and gender. Just maintain that parallel structure so the reader doesn't get um, confused. We've looked at the linear model for 
um, a factorial ANOVA. Let's look at the statistics that we're going to be considering uh, once we run this inside of SPSS. All right, so I've put up some sample data um, in each of these cells. There's six cells that result from a two by three design. Two times three is six. There's six total groups. Men who had zero, two, and four pints. Women who had zero, two, and four pints. That's six total groups. I've put scores in each one of the six cells and means in each one of the six cells. And then what I've done is kind of averaged the means for each uh, gender, right? So we had three means for men that average out to 56.46. That's the attractiveness rating for men averaging across the alcohol groups. We've got three means for women who had zero, two, and four pints. So the average attractiveness rating of the people women chatted up at the end of the evening is 60.21. And so it looks like if you average across or ignore the three different doses of alcohol, you can consider the gender factor by itself and conclude, you know, if these means, these two means are significantly different from each other, if the variability between these two groups is greater than the variability within these two broad groups and that summing across the three different alcohol doses, then you get a significant F value, right? And we, we'd conclude that women, um, well, and maybe we could express it this way, men are, are a little less selective generally than women when you average across how much alcohol they were having. All right, we could do the same thing for the other factor, for the B factor. We can say, all right, forget whether they were men and women. Let's just look at the average attractiveness rating of people who were being chatted up by men and women who had no alcohol, all right? Um, or two pints of alcohol, or four pints of, uh, of beer. Beer is what, what they're drinking. Okay, uh, here, if we see that there's significant variability among these three groups that is much, much greater than the variability within these three broad groups, and that's summing across men and women, regardless of what gender they were, right? Uh, then we conclude that uh, alcohol has a significant effect on the attractiveness rating of the person you chat up at the end of the evening. And post hoc testing might let us know that um, after four pints of alcohol, you, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, after four pints you're willing to chat with somebody that's significantly less attractive than after a different dose. Okay, so let's talk about some uh, different measurements that we're going to see in SPSS when uh, we calculate this um, factorial analysis of variance. There's total variability, which is represented by SS total. Sum of squares total is the sum squared deviation of every single score, regardless of which of the six cells the score is found in, from the grand overall mean. All right, and that's the total variability in the data set. We're going to partition this out into between treatments, right, or model sums of squares, and that has three different parts to it. The model sums of squares has sum of squares for the A factor, which is just a measure of how different these two means, means for men and women are from each other. Sum of squares for the B factor, which is how different these three means for zero, two, and four pints are from each other. Uh, and sum of squares for the interaction. Remember, that's gonna be leftover variability that may be explained by uh, a difference between men and women that's not the same at zero or two or four pints. You can actually see that's reflective in this data where there's not a huge difference between men and women here, maybe six, 6.2 points or so. Not a big difference here, it's four points, some points, but look, for zero and two pints, men are chatting up more attractive people than, than women are. On average, we don't know if it's significant. However, it goes uh, very widely in the opposite direction once four pints are involved. And remember, these are British pints. So here it goes in the opposite direction and at a much greater um, uh, magnitude, suggesting that 
that this variability term might be pretty high. So the, the interaction term uh, we might expect in this example to be pretty strong. All right, all three of these, sum of squares A, B, and the interaction of A times B, are all part of the between treatments or model sums of squares. The other part of the total sums of squares, besides between treatments or model sums of squares, that has three parts, is this one part, which is our error term, the sum of squares residual, which we also call sum of squares within treatments. We convert all four of the, well, the, the last four of these to variants. Uh, so we can talk about variance or mean squared for the A factor, mean squared for the B factor, mean squared for the interaction, and we divide each one of these by the same denominator factor here, which is residual or within treatments mean squared, to calculate three different F values. F of A tests for an, a significant main effect, that's an effect by itself of gender, F for the B factor, F sub B, tests for a main effect of alcohol by itself regardless of gender. And there's a third F that you get by dividing the mean square for the interaction by the same denominator that you use to get these first two, this within treatments uh, mean square, this within treatments variance, uh, that tells you whether the interaction is significant or not, or whether the difference between men and women is the same at these three different levels, or whether there's a difference in the gender effect that depends on alcohol. That's the interaction F. Okay, so one, one more time. F sub A is calculated as A variance, mean squared A, divided by the mean squared within treatments. F sub B is mean squared for B, divided by mean squared within treatments. F for the interaction is the interaction mean square divided by the same thing, mean squared within treatments. So three Fs, and you get a, a, a hypothesis test for each one of these, right, against this null that there is no effect of gender, there is no effect of alcohol, there is no significant interaction, and under that assumption of the null, we'll test whether um, we had, uh, are significantly uh, uh, deviating from that. So we'll, we'll conclude whether there were significant main effects of gender by itself, regardless of alcohol, whether there's a significant main effect of alcohol, regardless of gender, and then whether we need to interpret those effects in the context of an interaction. Okay. To sum up, we get three Fs, right, in a, in a two-way factorial ANOVA, two main effects, two tests of the main effects. That's the effect of one factor ignoring or averaging across the other factor. Um, and then we get this third F that tests for a significant interaction, which we'll have when the effects of one factor depend on the other factor. In other words, we have a significant interaction when the effects of one factor are different at different levels of the other factor. So here in this example, F sub A for the gender factor test whether there's a difference between men and women regardless of how much alcohol they had. F for alcohol test for a main effect of alcohol regardless of whether they were men and women. And the interaction here asks the question, are the effects of alcohol different for men than they are for women? You could look at this another way and say, is the gender difference the same after zero, two, or four pints, and, and I think that we'll see that uh, it is not the same, that these two factors do interact significantly, and that's going to change our interpretation of these main effects. That's all I've got for this first part of factorial analysis of variance, and uh, we'll see you next time.